Hi. This lesson can help both your reading power and your writing skills. You have studied the basics of pronouns. Now more about the power of pronouns. This is Nick Farrow with English Discovery. Let's start with a vocabulary check. There are not many words this time, but these words are not so easy. If you check them in your dictionary, try to find the meaning which is related to language. All of these words are about connections of meanings when we are reading or writing. If you watched the first video, you will have seen something similar to this. First, there is our topic, in this case John. Later, that topic appears again as a pronoun, and in this case, the pronoun he refers back to John. This is important to understand as a reading skill, and it's also important when you are writing to be sure that your topic and the pronoun are clearly related. Usually, the following pronouns appear in the same sentence or the next sentence. In the next slides, we are going to see some examples that are not very clear. Here is an example with everything in one sentence. But it's unclear. Does it mean that my sister loves me? Or her friend? If we rewrite the sentence this way, the meaning of she becomes very clear. This is also one sentence. But the meaning of the word they is not clear. We need to rewrite this one too. There are two possible choices and their meanings are, again, very different. In the top sentence, the pronoun they refers to rich people. In the second sentence, the pronoun them refers to expensive cars. But in the original sentence, we couldn't understand the meaning because the pronoun was not clear. Here we have a possible problem with two sentences. According to grammar, the pronoun its could refer to the hotel or the sea. However, any logical, reasonable person can easily understand that the beds belong to the hotel. I think in this case the meaning is clear enough. Now we need to look more at how pronouns are used to make connections between two and more sentences. This is the topic of cohesion. Cohesion is about the connections and relationships between sentences. This topic is more connected to logic than grammar, but if our grammar is weak, 
then this can cause misunderstandings. Where are my books? I put it on your desk. Well, this short conversation is quite logical, but there's a problem because B said it, not them. When we are writing, we need to be very careful about points like this. And when we are reading, a good understanding of cohesion will help us to become more powerful readers. And here's one more question. What does them now refer to? My books? Hmm. Actually, it means your books, doesn't it? Usually, we think of a thread as being a piece of cotton that we use with a needle. And the thread is used for holding things together. In writing and reading, it's about how an idea, a topic or a theme, is logically connected through the writing or conversation. Here we have highlighted two topics, John and his sister. You can see that John is referred to four times after his name is introduced. His sister is the second element or topic and she is referred to again three times. If you are writing you need to be careful that your threads are clear. And if you are reading, you should naturally be looking for the logical connections between sentences. This is not only about pronouns, but other points of grammar and vocabulary. So, now we're going to look at a short story called Attitudes. Looking for the threads in the story will help you develop your reading power. Please check the vocabulary words first so that the reading will be easy for you. Pause the video if you need to. Oh, and I use this word a few times, so check that too. So first, I want you to read through the whole story one time to be sure that you understand the meaning. Okay, here it is. I'll read it. One day, a ten-year-old boy went into a coffee shop and sat at a table. A waitress came to his table. How much is an ice cream sundae? he asked. Four dollars, the waitress answered. The boy checked his money. Oh, then how much is a plain ice cream? he said. The woman was becoming impatient because she saw some customers entering the cafe. They were looking for a table. Three dollars, she coldly said. The little boy again counted his coins. I'll have the plain ice cream, please, he said. When the boy finished the ice cream, he left his table, paid for his dessert, and left the cafe. Later, when the waitress came back to clean the table, she began to cry. There was a tip on the table. The boy did not buy the sundae because he did not have enough money to leave the waitress a tip. This exercise 
is the same as in the first video, but it's not only about pronouns. Any word that has the same meaning or is connected with the first word is useful in following a thread. Yes, pronouns are important. A and the help too. Usually a plus a noun appears first. If we talk about the same thing later, we will use the word the. Another useful technique is to look for words with similar meanings. We want to understand the connections in meaning from sentence to sentence and even from beginning to end. Follow the threads. This will make your reading more effective. To understand the idea, let's look at the first topic, the first element. You can see that the story is about a little boy, so he is element number one. And he is mentioned many times in this story. You can check through and see many more places where he appears. What's the next topic? Well, it's not the waitress, because people are not the only elements in a story. It's a coffee shop, and it appears again later in the story. So now, please pause the video and see how many different elements you can find. How many times do they occur? In the next slides, I'm going to use colors instead of numbers to indicate the various threads that occur in this story. If it's very difficult, then look at the next slide. It'll show the beginnings of some of the threads in color. Here are the first four elements showing threads by color. These are not complete. Notice on the second line that the word his is both red for the boy and green for the table. In fact, there are many points in this story which become quite complicated when we try to analyze everything. So, even at the end, not everything will be 100% complete. Can you complete the threads? And can you find some more? The next slide is going to give a lot more. Here is the whole story with the main threads shown in colors. As I said, this is not perfect. It's not a 100% complete analysis. Some points are not so clear, but the basic idea should be very clear now. One interesting point to notice is that the phrase a table in the middle of the story has no color. This is important because it's not about the same table as the boy was sitting about. It says that the customers were looking for a table and a is used to introduce a new topic. So we know this is not the table where the boy was. I hope this lesson was useful. I hope it was helpful. 
please give me a thumbs up if you like the lesson, and please subscribe or leave a comment. Good luck with your reading and writing power.